Always tied a big one on Good enough was good enough for me Lately I haven't been around My friends think that I skipped town But I just stumbled on a better place to be Tonight I'm Drew and welcome to the Port Sessions here in Hattiesburg, Mississippi and I am honored and privileged to have today on the porch Mr. Mark Bryan all the way from Charleston, South Carolina. Man, I can't thank you enough for being here. I, I know you're a busy man and I know that there's all these other things in your life and you took the time to come down here and perform at the songwriter social last night you did an amazing job by the way yeah, i really thoroughly enjoyed it and, and thoroughly enjoyed getting to know your your, your catalog um in person it was it, it was really great and uh um thank you again from everybody at uh, south city records for doing that um so thank you for having me yeah yeah no no it was uh, so what do you think about hattiesburg i think it's a great little town it i've is. had a blast here so far um you know i haven't spent a whole lot of time in mississippi other than just coming to do shows and uh this is uh, it's, it's great to be able to sit down and chill and get to meet a bunch of people and have a meal and those kind of things. So I'm really enjoying myself. Well, great. Well, great. I'm, I'm glad you are. Southern hospitality is alive and well here in Hattiesburg. That, that is true. <laughs> so, well, um, you know, for those of you guys who may not know Mark, uh, probably most people do, but Mark, you've had an amazing career. You're uh, an artist. You're a songwriter. You're a producer. You are a film composer. You are an educator. Um, at the College of Charleston, and um, you are also uh, the founding member and um, guitar player for a, a very famous band called uh, Hootie and the Blowfish. And um, you know what an amazing run you guys have had. I mean, you've been together how long now? Twenty-six or seven years. I mean, that's incredible. In this day and age, to have a band like that, I, I remember a time when you could not go more than. 30 seconds without hearing a Hootie song. I mean, it was just amazing. That must have been so just overwhelmingly exciting and, and, and just sort of uh, cosmic in some way, right? I mean... Yeah, I mean, the, the, we when we made the album Cracked Review, we we expected or hoped to sell maybe you know, 200,000 copies or something like that. And uh, and to have the success it did was just mind-blowing as much for us as, as for our fans and, and the people in the industry who, who couldn't believe it either. So it was just one of those... Uh, Phenomenons, and uh, I'm, just I'm just happy to be a, to have been a part of it. It must have been great. So, um, one of the things I wanted to talk about, um, since you and I both teach in uh, universities, I wanted to talk about you know, how did the band start? I, I mean, this is such an amazing story that you have. Um, well, uh, I brought my acoustic guitar down to college uh, at University of South Carolina, and uh, in my freshman year, I lived in the same dorm hall as Darius Rucker while he was in his sophomore year. And my buddy from high school, Dean, uh, who we played in bands together in high school, uh, he's a bass player, and he w he came down to uh, South Carolina as well, and we met Darius, and, and Darius and I started doing acoustic shows together, and then we grabbed Dean and and uh, on bass and, and started hooting the Blowfish. That's fantastic. I mean, what were some of the early uh, songs that you guys played? Um, you know, it's it's really interesting to go back and look at the very first set list that we did because right from the very beginning of playing together, we were all over the uh, the board stylistically. I mean, we did everything from the Beatles and Simon Garfunkel, like you might expect, to uh, the Commodores and Hank Williams Jr. <laughs> and uh, I'll never forget, I, I was like, how does this black dude know all the words to, to Family Tradition by Hank Williams Jr.? <laughs> but he did, he, and he's always been a country fan as well as a, a pop and rock and R&B fan, Darius has. So, and, and me as well. So we've, we've always kind of been all over the map stylistically. And I think that added to our sound later. We, we, as band members, we could feel free to bring in uh, a song in any style with the confidence that Darius would be able to sing over it. I mean, he's got a great voice. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, I, one of those iconic voices. One for the ages. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you think about just sort of, you know, how that happened. I mean, and one of the, th one of the things that you know I were talking about was just um, the importance of friendship within the band. I mean, that, that struck me, uh, just really resonated with me. Because I think people forget about you know, when, when, when you have a band like that, especially when it's been as long as it, you, know, you guys have been together, it's, it's, it's a deep relationship. Yeah. And I mean, Dean and I have practically known each other all of our lives because even our dads went to high school together. Wow. So, um, 
you know, Dean's just a lifelong buddy. And, and when we met Darius, for the first three or four years, we were all hanging out, and Sony, for that matter. We were, we were friends. The friendships were more important than the band at that point because we didn't really think anything would ever come from the band. We didn't know that we'd be doing it full time when we were in college. So we, the friendships were very important early on. Um, and then once we became a business together and, and went out on the road and all, the friendships just strengthened from there. And then you throw on top of that the fact that we all had families and that our kids are all friends now and we share in each other's kids' birthdays and all that kind of thing. And, and the friendships just get deeper and deeper. Not to mention fantasy football. Oh. So, you know, <laughs> that'll keep a friendship going or, or could go the other way, I suppose. That's incredible. <laughs> um, so let me ask you to say, what point? Did you say to yourself, I'm going to make this my life? Yeah, um, I think I knew from about age 16 that this was that I wanted to do something in music. I just I was very passionate about it early on. And I thought to myself, well, I don't know, in whatever incarnation, I'll be doing something with music just because my love for it. And then when, when when the four of us graduated from college, we had a sit down meeting where we all looked each other in the eye and said, you know, is, it, is this it or are we going to go get jobs? And everybody put their hand in. It was a one for all, all for one kind of thing. And and, um, and so we kind of set out on that road, not knowing what would ever happen, but knowing that we all were passionate about having a career in the music industry. And um, and being able to do it together as friends, I think, strengthened the group sure. a lot. You know. Sure. Well, and the, uh, um, the, the sum is greater than the parts yes. at that point, which, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. It's wonderful. Um, so there had to have been so many incredible moments along the way can you uh, kind of tell me one that like what it kind of sticks out to you like 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 any moment you had um, we got to we got to play uh i mean there's so many there really are I'm sure um sure. we got to play this is just the first one that popped off my head we got to play an, uh neil young does a benefit every year in uh, the bay area called the bridge school benefit and uh, we got to play that one year i think it was 95 or 6 probably 96 and Steven Tyler was on the bill. Beck was on the bill. Uh, Bruce Springsteen. Wow. Uh, Emily Lou Harris. You know, just great. So we were backstage with all, with all those folks. And at a time where we were fresh on the scene. So even though our album was really big at that moment, we were still like, you know, just junior high kids. Like, whoa, I you know, can't believe we're back here. Yeah. <laughs> That's Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, there, exactly. So. And, and everybody was really cool. We got to meet all of them and everybody was super cool. And I can say that almost about everybody we've met through the years, um, as far as the, the heroes that we looked up to, sure. you know, 99% of them were as cool as you hoped they would be. And so we've had some, some really great experiences with that. Well, man, well, you know, you deserve all the success you have. Um, you Thank know, you. one of the things I wanted to talk about, too, is kind of like, you know, your life now. And now you mm -hmm. have reinvented yourself in a lot of different ways mm -hmm. and, and you've expanded your career. And um, um, and you're also uh, a solo artist in, in your own right. And you're also writing uh, a prolific songwriter. And I, I, I love your material. And I wanted to just to, uh, you know, talk, talk, talk to me a little bit about that, about, you know, what's going on with your song. Yeah, writing. man. Well, so, uh, over the last five years, you know, we've decided to take a break from making records and touring as Hootie and the Blowfish. And, uh, and obviously Darius has had great success in Nashville with his Columbia record deal. Um, and so in the meantime, I've been trying some other things that I've always been interested in. And one was uh, being a producer and helping take young artists and helping mold their sound and their songs uh, to the next step, so to speak. And um, I really enjoy that process. And I, I think I bring a lot to the table with an up-and-coming artist and if, if I'm able to sit down with somebody in their song I can help arrange it and hopefully take it to another level and I really enjoy that and so I've gotten into that and done uh, a number of albums and EPs over the last 10 years um, and then uh, gotten involved with uh, the College of Charleston and in, in developing their music industry concentration um, very rewarding not something I would have thought I, I would have done but uh, it's great to be able to help kids and provide them with the knowledge and hands-on experience uh, that we didn't have when we were right. in school, yeah, okay. and um, and so I'm really enjoying that process. Uh, I got to score a film this year for the first time. Also, really enjoyed that. Uh, it's a little more tedious than I thought it was going to be, right. but uh, you know, hard, hard work pays off, and, and the film came out great. Um, I've also been working on producing a, a TV show called Live at the Charleston Music Hall, which is an Austin City Limits style 
show. That, I saw the clip. It looks great. Yeah, and I'm the really college, excited college of Charleston's involved with the production of it. That's so fantastic. Um, that's a great project that I'm involved in right now. And then I'm just still writing a bunch of songs all the time. And well, I sing. wanted to talk about that because you've got this song that I absolutely love. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's a, a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love that too, man. It just makes me happy. Okay? All right. I like that about your stuff. I mean, your stuff's just, it's uh, very positive. Thanks. Yeah, no, I, really I, nice I do here. try to. I don't do that with uh, intentionally necessarily, but when I hear it back, I, I agree with you. A lot of it comes from a, a positive place. Well, I tell you what, um, I don't want to keep the audience waiting. Would you mind playing a little bit of everything? I like I'll do that. It. A little bit of everything. That works. <laughs> Love that song. In fact, that song is so infectious. You got the whole entire crew clapping along with you. <laughs> Thank you. And I couldn't Thank help. You, crew. I, I almost started whistling, but I didn't. I didn't want to throw you off key. So, <laughs> nice. man. Well, thanks so much. Um, we're going to be right back in a little bit with uh, some more songs from Mark Bryan, all the way from Charleston, South Carolina. 
here on the Port Sessions in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. So talk to you guys in a couple minutes.